the Piwaka Waka has rolled all the way up underneath this rock. Like it is way up there. But you know how it is on the channel, we play it as it lie. Now let's go toss some plastic. And we've made it to hole one at Plantation Ruins Disc Golf Course for our first shot in Charlotte, North Carolina. I could not be more excited to get this round started. We are starting off with a nice and simple 250 foot dead straight shot with the left finish. We are fighting uphill a little bit. We are gonna full send our Kia. <sighs> All right, we caught a tree. It's another sub 30 degree day, so that's not a bad start. Good, not a great drive. We have left ourselves a very tricky 45 foot putt. We are gonna have to go with the straddle, send it on to Annie, and hopefully it will crash back for us and get this round started the right way. Oh, not a bad first putt for the par. Hold two, 244 feet. We want to hold a slight ante the entire way, and we have to give it a little height because if we catch those rocks up there, we could get a nasty roll away. We are going to full send our Proton Envy. Get up there. Oh, I think we caught those exact rocks that I said that we were trying to avoid. This hole is short, but it is very tricky to park because in order to get the height to clear these rocks and the bump in the fairway, you're likely to go past the basket and down the hill behind it. Very touchy shot. We've left ourselves probably 42 feet for the two. Oh, oh no. And it's rolling a little bit. Dang it. Yesterday was by far the best putting day I've had in a long time, so hopefully we can find that today as well. Hole three, 302 feet. It looks like the basket is tucked way down there to the left behind all of those trees up there. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but the ground is still completely frosted and iced over. So we are gonna try something fun. We're gonna go with our scepter and see how big of a skip shot we can get. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. Well, that only skipped about eight feet. That was very anticlimactic. We were coming in on a really great line. If we could have got that big skip that we were looking for, something cool just may have happened. Really exciting news, guys. I have received my first care package since being on the road. It felt absolutely amazing. It was from my grandfather. He sent me two electric hand warmers, some little rubber dinosaurs called finger slingshots. You guys do with that information as you will. And he also sent me some beef jerky, but he tried to vacuum seal it himself. And I think that was above his pay grade. You know what I mean? Cause it was all moldy, but hey, I appreciate it anyway. Big shout out to my grandpa. Hole four, 234 feet. You can go with a big Anheuser shot or you can try to do a little flick sidearm up the gut and let it finish right. That is what we're gonna try to do. And I'm gonna go with my splice. <sighs> Hook up. All right, not a bad toss. We did leave ourselves a pretty long putt though. We've left ourselves about 30 feet for the two. Nice putt. Hole five, we have a full on ace run, 234 feet, dead straight. I am gonna go with my champion Rhino because I am a little amped up this morning and it will handle more torque than my Envy. If I try to rip the Envy right now, I'm sure it's just gonna fade off to the right and leave us a long putt. So hopefully we can give it a good run. Oh, dang, no run, but it should be a short putt. Well guys, I guess we were so amped up that we noodle alarmed it and left ourselves 30 feet short. Nice putt. 
I'm telling you guys, the putting the past few days has just felt automatic. I've really slowed it down, more of like a slow putt style, kind of more of a hyzer putt working out great. Hole six, 226 feet. This is definitely another sidearm hole. It'd be really hard to get a backhand up there to the pin. We are still on the hunt for a sidearm ace. I've never had one. And as you guys can see, there's a Mando sign there. And just out of curiosity, it makes me wonder how you would attack that hole and miss the Mando. You know what I mean? Like you would have to throw so far out there, up and over everything. I'm sure it's there because there is a park lot right there but sometimes you see the mando and it almost feels like a challenge to try to avoid it but we are going to send our scepter oh it's too low skip up there oh really nice shot i think we hit the base of the basket i should go apply to get a job for a valet company because if there's one thing i'm good at it's park jobs Hunter, what was that? You need to accept that you're just not cool and move on. Get it together. Hole seven, 265 feet. This is a very tight and technical hole. We are gonna take this slight ante route the entire way and we are gonna go with our DX Stingray. I know DX plastic gets quite a bit of hate, but honestly, I still love it. And there's nothing wrong with bagging some old fashioned DX plastic. <sighs> I think we are gonna be quite a bit short, but we hit our line perfectly. The old Stingray definitely came through for us on this one. We have left ourselves a long tester though, probably about 33 feet. Nope, not a good putt at all. For the three. Hole eight, we're definitely just going for placement off this tee shot. We have 380 feet absolute meat hook right off the tee shot and then we'll scramble from there to try to make a play for the pin i'm not going to overthink this too much i'm just going to grab my splice rip it up there hopefully land in a good spot <sighs> pretty looking throw all right i think we nailed that well, we nailed it all right into an absolutely terrible lie. We still have 140 feet to the pin. And guys, I have to admit this pin location is absolutely gorgeous. We are gonna send the Envy on a big ante. Hopefully the stability hooks up for us at the end. Really nice shot. We did land about halfway down the side of this little hill, but luckily guys, we don't have to worry about the creek because it's currently frozen. Hole nine, 318 feet. This looks like an absolute horseshoe and it is a tricky tee shot because we have this huge hill right in front of us. It is a par four though, so I'm guessing the fairway gets pretty tricky up there. We're just gonna take our scepter, send it and scramble from there. Oh no. Oh, that was a really bad tee shot. I threw that way too hard, went straight in the woods. Now we're really scrambling for it. As expected, we are not in the best position. We could definitely play for an easy par here. The only way to really go for the basket is to send a shot up the skinniest gap you've ever seen, which of course we're gonna try with the Piwaka Waka. Dang it, <laughs> dang it. Not even close, not a chance. Well, no one can say we didn't send it. So of course we are gonna send it again. We still have probably 90 feet downhill for the three. All right, nice layup for the four. Whole line break, and today I'm gonna to ask you guys a simple question, but I want you to leave your answers in the comments below. And that is how and where did you lose your favorite disc? For me, I was playing at the North Cove at their weekly doubles round and we played the Gorge, which is the really big course there. It was getting very dark. And on the final hole, hole 18, I lost my Nate Sexton Firebird. I had that beat in 
perfectly. I would throw it all the time. I looked for probably a solid hour and then I drove back there the next day, which at the time was over an hour drive and I looked for it again. And also two days ago, right before I left South Mountain, I lost the beloved two line AJ Destroyer. Threw it right into the water, which let me tell you that did not age well if you watched my recent vlog. Water like this, I would think is pretty avoidable. And later that day, I actually went back to South Mountain and I dove in the water to try to find it, of course, because I never give up that easily. And sadly, after about 20 minutes, the neighbor came out really upset, giving me all kinds of grief and eventually made me leave. To be fair, there's no signs that say no swimming or anything of the nature. I'm not sure what the big deal was, but I went out, I did some field work to try to find a replacement. And funny enough, guys, you can all guess what made its way back into the bag, the old Corvette. I can't get rid of this thing if my life depended on it. It always finds its way into the bag and then I get frustrated with it and then it leaves. This thing does get flippy on me sometimes, but without question, it is my farthest thrower if I really get a good rip on it. So guys, let me know what was your favorite disc that you lost and how did you lose it? Hole 10, 223 feet. Dead straight, it looks like the hole goes quite a bit downhill, so I'm sure it is easy to go past the basket or hyzer out and go into the woods to the left. We are gonna full send our Envy and hopefully it can hold that Annie for us. Nope. It didn't Annie at all. That was the worst throw I've had in a long time. That was definitely a stingray shot, but it has left us this very fun 70 foot, slightly downhill, tight tunnel putt. And of course we are gonna full send it. Oh, not a bad run. Well, I think we all knew how that was gonna play out if we didn't make it in the basket. We've left ourselves probably 34 feet way uphill to save our par. Oh no. Hole 11, 226 feet, meat hook right. It sets up for another sidearm shot, but you know what? We've already thrown a couple of those today, so we are gonna give some love to the Pewaka Waka. Get up there. Don't cut roll. As long as we didn't cut roll, I think we'll be okay. I don't know how, but the Pewaka Waka has rolled all the way up underneath this rock. Like it is way up there, but you know how it is on the channel. We play it as it lie. I am gonna try to do some crazy flick shot or hyzer shot for the two. We're gonna go with our Stingray. Oh, I don't know if that was close or not, but it felt pretty good. I think we were really close and that would have hands down been in the top five disc golf shots of my life. Hole 12, 433 feet. It looks like we have a giant left hook off the tee shot. Very hard to get any distance off of this unless you go for some big turnover sidearm shot, which we are gonna try. And as you guys know, I am not good at. We're gonna go with the Orc. I've only ever tried this one other time and I believe it was at Big Bend and I had to look for the Orc for about 45 minutes. So hopefully we don't have a repeat of that. That was the best sidearm shot of my life. I will take that. Overall, it was really not that good of a shot. I probably could have just thrown a hyzer and got here a lot easier, but I am very happy with it. We have to get through an absolute gauntlet of trees. The pin is dead straight up there. I would guess about 165 feet. We are gonna try to do a little flex flick shot with our scepter. Oh boy. We're kind of making a mess of this one, but we should still be able to walk out with a par. We still have probably a hundred feet. I'm gonna send a nice little flick shot with our justice. All right, we should be able to knock that one down. For the four. 
talk about an absolutely gorgeous hole. We have hole 13, 247 feet, tunnel shot way uphill. You can see the basket lit up by the sun up there. We are gonna full send our hex. Oh, what a nice shot. That one felt really good. Hopefully we can keep this up. We're feeling and we're playing pretty good today. Hole 14, it's time to air the arm out. We have 509 feet. The basket is dead straight. We are gonna take this long ante route. It is quite a bit uphill, but for the first time in a while, we are gonna send our Star Corvette. Oh, we did catch one of those small branches. It really took a lot of the wind out of our sails to... S That's what happens when I try to get fancy with words after I throw, and now it's really awkward because I can't just like add a cut here, so... Well, after our very awkward and bad tee shot, we still have 220 feet wide open, dead straight. We are gonna try to give it a run with our champion rhino. Oh, it slipped out of my hand a bit. I think we're quite a bit short, honestly. I should have known better about making a comment about playing good today. We've left ourselves probably 30 feet for the three. Okay, time to wrangle it in. For the four. For any of my course designers out there or people who just really like to help take care of their local courses, this is the first time I've seen something like this and it is absolutely genius. Someone screwed pieces of three tab roofing shingles to this bridge and as you guys know treated lumber over a long period of time can get mossy and very slippery this is a genius idea it's inexpensive a bundle of shingles is usually like 29 dollars for the cheaper ones at like lowe's or home depot and one bundle will get you a ton of single pieces to put anywhere that you need grip so keep that in mind awesome course hack hole 15 198 feet Dead straight tunnel shot. I'm sure you guys can't see much. The lighting is not being very helpful today, but we are gonna try to give it a little run with our Envy. Oh, we did catch a tree down there, but I think we'll have a pretty decent putt. As it turns out, it's actually a very tricky putt. We have this tree just right in front of us, so we're gonna have to send a big ante putt, probably about 35 feet. Oh, dang, we almost snuck past that tree. For the par. Hole 16, it's only 202 feet. We have to throw dead straight off the tee pad slightly uphill, but we want a strong left finish, so we are gonna go with our Kia. Oh, we absolutely smashed that tree. We have left ourselves a long but runnable shot, probably about 75 feet. I'm actually gonna take this sneaky backdoor ante lane. Hopefully we give it a good run. <clears throat> oh my gosh, we hit the chains. We just tickled the chains a little bit. That would have been such an awesome shot. For the par. Hole 17, 282 feet, slightly downhill. We are gonna give this a full run with the hex. Oh, it's not gonna hook up. Oh, we smacked a tree, but we should be pretty close. For the two. And rounding off our amazing day at Plantation Ruins in Charlotte, we have hole 18, 238 feet, big meat hook right, and we are gonna end with a sidearm splice shot. Get up there. Oof, we hit something pretty hard, but I think it was a good final shot. We are not as close as I thought. We have left ourselves a tricky 30 foot uphill putt for the two, and let's hope that we can finally end on a good note. 
Let's go. We needed it and we got it. And that wraps up Plantation Ruins, our first disc golf course in Charlotte. And the first thing I wanna say guys is we started off with a bang. As I mentioned earlier, this course was designed for the 2012 Worlds. And let me tell you guys something, it shows. As you guys saw, this course does not have a ton of wide open bomber shots. It is definitely on the shorter side of things, but it is very technical. And a lot of the holes are pretty deceiving. They look a lot easier than they actually play. You have a lot of holes with risk versus reward. You can run some shots, but you will find yourself in trouble behind the basket. And then you have a handful of those longer par fours where disc placement is key and critical. Another thing about Plantation that is very awesome is people of all skill levels can come here, admire the good design, and have a lot of fun playing this course. Plantation has great tee pads, signage from hole to hole, baskets, really just everything, and it's located in the middle of a very nice park. It has great gazebos and a ton of open fields if you want to work on some of your distance drivers or any other field work. Overall, I will give Plantation Ruins the very solid score of 8.7 out of 10. The only thing that it's really lacking is some jaw-dropping scenery or some signature holes that really set it apart. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and for any avid disc golfers out there make sure at some point you make your way to Charlotte because then it will be your turn to go toss some plastic. <laughs>